So I was contacted by the folks at Banggood, and they asked if I would do a review of this Mixig oscilloscope. And I like oscilloscopes, and Mixig is a pretty reputable company that puts out some pretty fantastic products. So I was pretty excited about that opportunity. This particular model is the TO2002, and I believe TO stands for Tablet Oscilloscope. This is actually running on an Android tablet, 10.1 uh, inches. And uh, 2002, yeah, I think 2000 is maybe the model designation. And then the two is because we have two channels or ports here at the top. And then you can see the specifications. One mega ohm, 14 picofarads, uh, 300 volts RMS. And these are supposed to be cat one rated. There's another port over here that says aux out. And I believe this is if you want to take your signal that's coming in and then use this to put it into another um, instrument. So... This isn't exactly the best picture. So what I'm going to do is this has an HDMI out. Let's take a quick look at that. So if you look at this side, you have a power button on and off. You have a ground lug for grounding. You have a comp probe compensation set of terminals. And then a USB host and then a, uh, a USB device port here. I'm not 100% sure how to use those. I do know that you can connect this to your computer and then you can transfer files back and forth. We have HDMI out, which is what I was talking about. USB-C, I'm assuming this is for powering. We have a lock button to protect the on off from going on and off if this is in your backpack or something. And then we have a DC power port to charge your device. Now this does run on a battery and it is 7,500 milliamp battery. And I believe that gives you four hours of runtime. That's gonna depend upon what you're doing with the device and how bright you have it set. So as you can see, I have a signal coming in here and I just wanted to play around a little bit with it and kind of understand how it works. Now it's my understanding that these are your channel um, markers or your channel menus and then I can just write, there we go, I can slide that over. And when you set your channel, you can do things like your coupling, you have DC, AC ground, which is standard stuff. You can use either voltage or current probes and then you can set your probe setting here. Um, then you have some bandwidth filters that you can play around with and then you're scaling and then you can also label your waveform that you're measuring, which is pretty handy. What I want to do is I want to turn this one off and there we go. So now we just have a single, uh, single waveform that's coming in there and you access menus this way, which is a little different than some of the oscilloscopes that I played around with, but I kind of really like it. I really like the touch uh, features that you have here. And then we have common measurements. We have statistical measurements that we can take a look at. Um, we have counter stuff that we can turn on and off. Um, so for example, we have a frequency meter and let's go ahead and turn that on for channel one and see what happens. And then up here we have a frequency counter in Hertz. Let's come back down here and go back to common measurements and some of the stuff that I like to turn on is peak to peak. Oh, that just highlighted it down here and you can see a measurement. And let's just add another frequency and I don't know, maybe width. And let me go ahead and just turn this off. You can also adjust your cursors here by setting this and what's neat is, is that you can actually drag this waveform around and move it but then you also have fine waveform adjustments if you wanted to move it up or down now right now this is set on a rolling or scrolling setting and let's see i can come in here and i believe it's under display and you can see right here roll you can turn that off and let me go back up and it's going to take a couple seconds to start to redraw our waveform there we go so what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook this up to the HDMI out and then we can play around with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's the product page from the Mixig website. And the reason I wanted to pull this up is I just wanted to come down here and quickly show the specifications. Now you can see the different models in the TO line. I have the TO2002 we, we covered earlier. And uh, our bandwidth is 200 megahertz. And then we have our rise time, analog channels, sampling rate, memory depth. And I'll have a link to this below where you can come and take a look and read all of this if you'd like. But you don't have to come and read it if you don't. But it goes over the specifications for the actual device and then how you can expect it to perform. So this is pretty handy. And we have the scope connected via the HDMI port to my computer. 
And a couple things I wanted to show real quick is I can hit this home button and then I go here and you can see that I actually have a full Android interface. And so I can go to settings, for example, and I can look at different things, right? So I can go into my storage and see that, uh, I've got, I don't know, <laughs> 7.98 uh, gigabytes of space, but it says used of 32. So that tells me how much I have used. And then over on the right-hand side, I have a percent used. And then you can come in here and you can see different things, like if you have uh, photos and videos. I don't have any of that, but this uh, scope does have the ability to save recordings and it has the ability to save screenshots, uh, waveforms, and things along those lines. Let's go back here, and then if I scroll up from the bottom, I get this menu interface, and uh, I can just hit the back button to go here. Maybe I didn't do that right. Let me hit the back button. Here we go. And there's other applications, and I believe that you can go into the app market and install other ones, but like it comes with this electronic tool, which is pretty handy, and you can use this calculator to figure out different things should that be necessary for you. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, here's a web browser. Let's see, I did set this up to connect to my home Wi-Fi. You can see the Wi-Fi signal indicator in the and next to the battery indicator in the upper right-hand corner. And so it set its home page for the Mixig website. Here we have a calculator, uh, which is pretty handy stuff. Let's go back. And then I can come down here and look in the gallery if I have any pictures saved, or I can pull up the user guide, which is on the scope. This user guide's pretty well written. It's 365 pages, so it's all-encompassing. Uh, admittedly, I have not gone through the entire thing, but I have looked up a couple of different features. And it's written uh, in good enough English that even a guy like me can figure it out. All right, to get back to our oscilloscope app, we just click on that, and there we are. I can change the time setting using this menu at the bottom. So I can adjust. Now we are two seconds. Now we are five seconds. Let's give this thing a second to start drawing our waveform again. And uh, I think what I can do is I can come back over here and let's turn rolling back on. Oh, there we go. Um, I was messing with my transparency. There we go. And you can see the signal starting to come back. Now I can move my waveform just by adjusting here and you'll see it start to come back over. Okay, so in addition to the oscilloscope, it comes with some other stuff. Like one is this charging cable that you can use to charge or run your oscilloscope. It also comes with a couple of these international adapters should you need them. I didn't because this has a standard plug on it. Let's go ahead and get this out of there. So the scope also came with this protective glare screen, I think is what it is. It comes with some wipes and some cleaning materials if you want to go ahead and apply that. I didn't put it on there because I'm really, really bad at that kind of stuff. Um, it comes with certifi certificates of calibration, which is pretty cool and pretty handy. That way uh, you know that your scope will be accurate. And then it comes with these P130A uh, oscilloscope probes and you can see there's some specifications there I'm not sure what this says but I think it says subscribe to the smoke and ape channel let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have all right so you can see here that we do have two scopes uh, they are labeled blue and yellow which would match your outputs on here now you do have some color coordination stuff here to match your outfit um, and then you have some different things that you can connect for testing grounds and probing them and then it also comes with this probe compensation adjuster screwdriver, which is pretty handy. And these are your standard hook style probes. And then you have your alligator clips for grounding. And then here we have some information. You can pause this if you want. So you can see these look to be 200 um, megahertz probes. And there's some specifications on here with them. And it shows you how to do your compensation. All right, now we are going to connect the scope up to the Siglin SDG 1062X, and this is an arbitrary waveform generator, and we're going to look at some more signals. Okay, so what we have here is the scope, and we have two different signals coming in. One is a square wave, and one is a sine wave. And what I wanted to do is play around with the math settings. 
So if I scroll down on the right hand side, I get this menu and then I can pick math. And what we get there is something goofy looking. And I can adjust the amplitude of this. Let's do this. And I can slide that over and I can get different combinations. So we have a source and we have source one and source two, and I can set either of those to channel one and channel two. And then we have some math features here where I can add, subtract, multiply, and or divide. Um, let's go back to add. And then it looks like I can come down here and do FT, FFT settings. Now I really don't know what I'm doing, so I'm not going to play around with that too much. I guess I could set this in, in decibels as opposed to line. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's do source channel 2. And then maybe we'll go to a hamming. Actually, let's change our source back to channel one. And let's go ahead and center that. I have no idea what this is going to actually do. And I guess I'm going to have to read the manual on that one. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to turn one of these off. And I think I'm going to turn this one off. And let's go ahead and move this level down to the center of the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with various waveforms so we can see what they look like. Uh, here we go. This would be our sine wave. No, nothing, nothing exciting there. We can take a look at ramp waves. And what I want to do is I think I'm going to turn the frequency up on this thing a little bit. And I can adjust it on the scope, but that is high of a frequency as my signal generator will produce. Here we are with a pulse wave. This is looking at just specifically noise. Here we are with stare up. And let's see what else we got in here. Stare down. Stare up and down. Uh, trapezoids. Pulse again. Negative pulse. Up ramp, down ramp, and then a sine trapezoid. And then this is what they're calling a sine ver. I think that's for variation. I have no idea. Okay, in the description below, I will have a link to Banggood where you can pick this scope up should you choose to do so. I want to say thank you to Banggood for sending this to me for my consideration. Now, I know in this video we didn't cover all the features and functions. That would be a very long video. What I think we'll do moving forward is, is that we'll incorporate this scope into some of the testing that we do in the channel, so you'll see a lot more of it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.